me again, we're going to deal with interlocking and solid stitches. Now, why do we use solid stitches? Solid stitches are not used in, in all interlocking patterns, but um, it can be used. It is indicated in my patterns as DCIB or DCIF stitches, DCIB being double crochet in back or DCIF double crochet in front. Solid stitches are stitches that create these solid definition lines, as you can see on the lion's face and on his mane. I wanted it to be prominent. I wanted it to stand out. I really wanted to emphasize the certain features of the, of the project. Um, here it is used to define the eye, the brow, the nose, the mouth. Solid stitches are done without a chain one in between. It's done in sequences. So in other words, your instruction on your pattern would be DCIB3 or DCIB5. It will always be in an uneven number, by the way. It will either be 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, as long as it's an uneven number because of the way that it's stitched. So we're going to talk about this in depth in this video and I'm going to show you exactly how these are formed. So let's go. hook we've used solid stitching here to give the face more definition to fill in the section of the eyes a bit of the brow and the nose that's why we use solid stitches in solid stitches there are no chains in the sequence I will explain that in a moment and we will actually practice them there are no chains in the sequence. There's only a chain at the end of a sequence. Like I said, I'll explain it in a moment. You can see it here on the leopard's face as well. In order to create his spots, we used random sets of solid stitching to give that some definition. Okay, and the elephant. Again, the eyes, we used it there. We used it to define the ears. And sometimes we use bigger sections of solid stitching. And sometimes we use less. It all depends on what it is that, um, how much definition we want. Okay. So. How do we work solid stitches? Solid stitches firstly on a pattern are indicated, on my patterns anyway, and one or two other designers, they are indicated as DCIB or DCIF stitches. What does that mean? Double crochet in back or double crochet in front. Okay. If it, your wrong side of your work is facing you, in other words, you're going to do an even numbered row, then a solid stitch section is indicated as a DCIB stitch. DCIB stitches are only visible on the front side of the work though, on the right side of the work. Okay, they are not visible on the, on the wrong, wrong side of the work. But they are worked from the wrong side of the work, or, or rather they can be worked from the wrong side of the work. Hence the DCIB. If the right side of your work was facing you, in other words, you were on an uneven numbered row, row 5, 7, 9, 11, then it would be a DCIF stitch. Now, how are solid stitches worked? So let's start row 4 of this little practice piece that we're doing, this arb design we're creating that could end up looking like an alien. Maybe SpaceX can take it into space with them on their next little shuttle mission. Anyway, so yarn over. Okay, remember we're starting the work now. 
and we're just stitching off. So I'm just going to do a back stitch here just to get us started. And I'm going to do one or two front stitches. Now, let's do a DCIB stitch, okay? So let's say that the instruction is DCIB3, okay? And, th and that would be the instruction, by the way, on a pattern. It would be DCIB and then the number of stitches that need to be stitched in that sequence. And that sequence, by the way, is always going to be an uneven number. So it will never be DCIB4 or DCIB6. It will always be DCIB3, 5, 7, 9, 11, whatever it is, okay? But it will always be an uneven number. Similarly, for DCIF stitches, always an, in an uneven number. Okay, so it'll be yarn over. You will, it's a B stitch, so you're gonna go into the back. You're gonna go into the back of a double crochet like normal, like normal, but there's no chain one. Remember, this is an instruction for DCIB3. You're gonna yarn over for the next stitch. You're now gonna work the second of your three stitches into the chain space over there, this chain space over here. And you're going to work the third stitch into the next double crochet right next to it. And then you're going to chain one. I'm going to do that whole thing again. Let me unpick it and redo it. So it's yarn over. You're going to work the first one of the three into a double crochet, as per normal. Then you're going to yarn over and then you're going to work into the chain space right next to it. And then you're going to yarn over and you're going to work into the next double crochet. And only then, because you're now at the end of the solid stitch sequence, do you chain one. And if you now looked at the front of your work, if I turn this forward, you looked at the front of your work, you now have three double crochets right next to each other. And the chain one is at the end. So we're gonna do that again. Let me just do a few back stitches in between, uh, sorry, some front stitches in between, just to get us away from that a little bit. Um, yeah, let's do a couple more. Because I'm stitching an arb sample, there's no format to this pattern, so I'm having to just double check that I try to do the DCIB stitches where it's possible. Um, see. Oh, it's possible over there. Okay, so let's just work our way towards that section. I'm just doing all the back and front stitches, just so I can get to where I need to be. Right. So let's work some DCIB stitches. So it's yarn over, insert it into a double crochet as per normal. And again, let's assume that the instruction is DCIB3. It's yarn over. You did a double crochet into another, another double crochet, no chain space. Yarn over, working into this chain space below, do your second double crochet, and yarn over, working into the next double crochet, do your third double crochet, and now you chain one. Okay? Now let's assume that the instruction on the pattern is DCIB3, comma, DCIB3. What do you do then? That's two sets of DCIBs right next to each other. You do your first DCIB three, which we've just done. You chain one. Remember, there's always a chain one at the end of each DCIB sequence. And each sequence is independent of the next one. So what I mean by that? If the instruction is DCIB three, DCIB three, the first DCIB three, is, an, is independent from the second one. 
which means there has to be a chain space in between them. So you would DCIB3 chain one, and then you would skip this chain space, because remember you've chained one. That chain one takes the place of this chain space over here. And you'd start the next DCIB in this double crochet here, into this chain space for your second double crochet, into this double crochet for your third one, and you would chain one. And that would give you this little gap. And those little gaps are important because in a real design, it can give you things like this, that's a, this is a DCIB five and a DCIB five with a chain in between. Okay. It can also give you this kind of look. Okay. Those are two DCIB threes with a chain in between. This here is five chain, three, chain, three, chain, and five. Okay, so never forget to do your chain, your one chain at the end of a DCIB sequence. Okay, we're going to go to the end of the row and then we're going to um, do row uh, 4B and then we're going to do DCIF stitches on row 5. So I'm going to meet you at the end of this next row and then we'll do some DCIF stitches. Right, so now we're going to start on an uneven number row and do some DCIF stitches. Now remember, our color B must be lying to, our, to the front because it's an uneven number row. And because we finished the previous rows correctly, it is automatically there. How cool is that? Okay, and I forgot to do my three chain at the end of it there so let me just do that okay i think i did four now okay so when you do dcif stitches there is no difference in the concept of a dcif and a dcib stitch except for whether it is in the front or the back of the stitch okay so a dcif stitch would be Yarn over, insert the hook into the double crochet. Yarn over, there's no chain. Insert the hook into the chain space because we're now assuming that this is a DCIF3 instruction. That's the second double crochet. Yarn over, do the third one into the double crochet. Three double crochets right next to each other chain one because you're at the end of the sequence okay let's just do that again I'm quickly going to get across to the area where it makes it possible for me to do that okay now here's an interesting section that we're reaching so there are dci stitches here from the preceding row remember when we did dcib stitches we did two sets of three next to each other so if i were to stitch in here i would go let's assume that i wanted to stitch i didn't want to do a dcif stitch here let's assume that i want to do normal front stitch chain one and front stitch in this section then i would yarn over go into the first double crochet to do my first front stitch and chain one, yarn over, skip this double crochet and go to the next one. Because remember, this chain one that you just did takes the place of that double crochet over there. Do you see that? It's double crochet, chain one, which takes the place of that double crochet, because remember, you always have to skip a stitch when you do normal stitches, and then it's double crochet into the stitch and chain one. Now let's assume we want to do DCI stitches on top of DCI stitches. Okay, 
we want to create maybe a solid straight line. So it's yarn over, insert the hook into here. And so the instruction, by the way, on the pattern for something like this would be DCIF3. And the fact that you're stitching it on top of other DC, of previously stitched DCI stitches is what creates the straight, solid straight line. Now you can see I've stitched a double crochet into that double crochet, a double crochet into this one, a double crochet there, and no chain spaces. I'm now going to chain one at the end of the sequence. Okay. Let's assume we want to do normal DCIF stitches again. So it's yarn over, no chain space. DCIF. Let's assume that this instruction, actually, let's get interesting. Let's assume that this instruction is DCIF5. So it will be yarn over. Let's start from the beginning. Yarn over. Insert the hook. No chain space. Yarn over, do the second double crochet into the previous chain space. No chain space here. Into the double crochet. That's number three. Number four is into a chain space. And number five is into a double crochet. Now, if you haven't already noticed, the interesting thing with DCI stitches is this. The uneven numbered stitch in the sequence is always actually stitched into a double crochet. Number one is into that double crochet. Number two is into this chain space here. Number three is into that double crochet. Number four is into a chain space. Number five is into a double crochet. That does not change. It is always like that. Whether you are stitching DCI B3, DCI F5, DCI F7, DCI B11, that does not change. Your uneven numbered one in your sequence will go into a double crochet. Your even number will go into the chain space right next to it. Okay. Be careful of the last one though, because sometimes this little double crochet hides itself, and then you've got to go find him. And it is very easy to forget about him. Okay, so let's just put him back in there, because I've just unpicked it. And you chain one at the end of your sequence. That is DCIF5 that you've just done. Now let's assume you're going to do, uh, let's do a front stitch here. And let's do a back stitch. And let's do DCIB3 again. So it's yarn over. And then into the space. There are no chain spaces, remember, in between my double crochets. DCIB, DCIF3, chain one. Let's do a back stitch. And do some more back stitches. And another back stitch. Okay. Now we get into a section where we have to do back stitches here. We've got to do one back stitch, a normal back stitch, a chain one, and another normal back stitch. So it is yarn over, go into the first of these double crochets, chain one, and then skip this one. And go into the next one. Do some front stitches to end this row. And your OBS because this is the end of a A row. And one, two, three, chain for turning. You can do four if you want. And that could be that. Okay. That is the be all and end all of solid stitches. There's 
it, it, it's, there's no rocket science to it. Really, there isn't. It's really just about watching where you're going, making sure that you don't do chain spaces in between the double crochet sections, and then making sure that you do a chain at the end of the sequence where you have two sequences like here, where they follow each other, where they are consecutive, there must be a chain space, okay? Um, yeah, DCIF and DCIB stitches, that's all you need to know. Hey guys, if you're interested in following me on Instagram or joining my Facebook group for interlocking crochet, whether you're a beginner or you're interested in more patterns, the links are below in the description.